With the fifth Riot game in nine years and the move to next gen only for the fifth installment, hopes are high and the pressure is on Milestone to get it right after a couple of below par games. So, have they done it? Let's find out, shall we? Ride 5 is undoubtedly a damn beautiful game. Rain, shine, night or morning, the in-game lighting is simply one of the best things about Ride 5. Since Milestone Switch from their in-house engine to the Unreal Engine 4 back in early 2017, I've really not had any issues with the graphic fidelity. And even though it's a stunning looking game, it does also run like butter on my RTX 3060. Once again, it is safe to say Milestone have nailed the visuals on their fifth installment of the Ride series. Career modes in the Riot series have always been a big selling point to the franchise. With 236 bikes to be thrashed around 38 circuits at launch, it once again is the mode the majority of players will spend their time in. With a mix of classic short races, time trials and endurance races, there is plenty of variety to get your teeth into. New rival feature works quite well as throughout your career there are certain riders who will push you in every class. They even have their own backstories which is a nice touch to make the career mode feel a bit more personal. Racing Online has always been a mixed bag in Milestone games, but to its credit, Ride 5 is one of the better Milestone packages online. It was clear from my very first race that the netcode has made a nice step, which allows closer racing and less random crashes than previous games. The online system is pretty much unchanged from most of Milestone's game, but the improvement to netcode makes it a much more appealing option to players. Now I'm pretty brutal when it comes to physics and bike games. I'm very much sim orientated and Milestone games have always claimed to be a sim but really haven't delivered. Unfortunately this is the case again with Ride 5. First off there is very little feedback from the controller which makes the front end a real mystery to understand your crashes. By the time the controller has any feedback you are nearly almost about to crash. The game has an overall very understeer feel to it. Even with a modern race bike on race tyres, they don't really tend to turn much. All bikes suffer from what I would consider to be a lack of torque, which makes corner speed a much more appealing way to make lap time. But with the understeer, that can make the game quite frustrating at times. Bottom line is that Ride 5 is overall more arcade, with a few sprinkles of simulation thrown in for flavour. And no, unfortunately it's still nowhere near GB bikes in terms of riding enjoyment. Now I have been very critical of Labo Milestone's AI. When you compare them to some of their four wheel rivals, they have crumbled like a cheap packet of biscuits. So far in Ride 5, I am surprised by the level from the AI. But more customization than we've ever seen from Milestone game in regards to AI, it must be said they're definitely a step in the right direction the ability to increase or decrease the overall aggressiveness and the relative decent pace, they are now a good challenge to the player. Now they are not perfect, but simply the best we have seen from Milestone of late. Riot has always been Milestone's baby, and with the lack of interference from external bodies it shows what they can produce when they are given a bit more time. This is by far the most I have enjoyed a Milestone game in years, with the vast amount of bikes which are very well modelled and the beautiful tracks from around the world, but as always it has some major drawbacks. It's a typical buggy mess at launch with some really annoying bugs in nearly every part of the game, and with the blow power physics it just takes a shine off a pretty fun game. My final rating for Ride 5 is 7 out of 10.